Okay, so we all know that we do learn a lot from our mistakes. We're tired of hearing that. But there are surely some things that I would have done differently when I started learning how to code eight years ago. And if I was starting over in 2023, there are some things that I would definitely not do. I've separated a few topics and pieces of advice that I think are very important on how to choose the area that you want to follow, what technologies to learn, and some crucial mistakes that you should avoid in order to take the most out of your learning path. So let's get started. First thing I would not do if I was starting software development in 2000, 23. I would not go for front-end development. Why? Because it's popular and it's easy to start. And you may think, well, that's exactly the point. You know, that's why I'm learning HTML and CSS. Well, don't you think that millions of people have already thought about it as well? Well, if you like front-end development and you want to learn because you like it, that's up to you. But if you want to actually build a career, I believe that front-end development is a market that has so many people on it. Online job apps for front-end software developers receive hundreds of applications in less than an hour. And my strategy at first would be to go for something that is less competitive. But all IRS in IT are competitive. IT is a competitive field, yes. But naturally, there will be areas that are more competitive than others. And front-end development is in high demand nowadays, but also all of new people that are getting into tech, well, not all of them, but a significant part are always aiming at front-end development because it's easy, because, you know, HTML and CSS are relatively easy technologies to learn. But when there's too much people available to do the same work, it is natural that this work tends to be the Less valued. Okay, so what would I go for in terms of areas? Well, by personal preference, I would start by flirting with mobile app development, start studying technologies like Kotlin, Swift, React Native, Flutter, and backend development with Java, Python, and even JavaScript. At least I think that nowadays there's too much focus on front-end development. But you can also check out some other areas as cloud computing and data analysis. At a first pace, I would say stay away from areas that require a broader knowledge of how things work. For example, development and operations. In DevOps, you need to understand key parts of development and operations and security where you need to have a deep understanding of web protocols. Again, if you are a total beginner, because if you did, if you already do have some knowledge of these areas, you know, go for it. And if you're not aiming at actually getting a job, if you have started with front end, you are not doomed. Okay. It's just an advice that I will give so to someone, you know, Maybe don't start with something that a lot of people are already starting with and go for something no, that is not so much looked for. Second thing I would do is exactly what I did at first, which is learn the basics of programming log logic and data structures well, please. If there's a topic that you should invest more of your time on is in learning the basics, learning the fundamental. How does a computer think? It's amazingly good at following orders you know, receiving input and giving out output. But nothing guarantees that it will give you the correct output, only you, programmer. So what kind of basic topics can you study? Well, variable and data types are basic, like the first thing you learn when you start programming. But what I think will differentiate you is knowing how to use data structures, understand conditional loops, conditional loops, seriously, understand conditional statements, loops, functions, methods, knowing how to deal with memory, all of these topics. If you have a good and solid foundation, you are good to go. For example, I started learning C and I love that language. It's just my, my favorite. I think it's very powerful. You can and, you know, do a lot of things with it. And I think I would recommend a beginner to start with C. That, that may sound like crazy, but you know, a lot of people recommend Python and etc. But when you learn C from scratch, like from how things work inside of the memory of the computer, how pointers work, how, how variables are allocated inside the memory. But I don't know, I think it gives you a solid, understa a solid understanding for, uh, you know, working with more high level programming languages like Python. But 
I don't know if I would recommend actually someone starting with C, but all of these topics you can find online on websites and even YouTube has, lo has lots of content. But I believe for starters, you could benefit a lot from learning these subjects in a more visual way or even interactively. Because believe me, when I worked with C, I was implementing a data structure called linked list. And to understand how to add an item to a list and how to remove it, I used to draw a linked list on paint to understand exactly how to how to deal with it and how to you know organize it. I'm a very visual person, so I think it's very important for you when you're learning to have a visual representation of what you're doing. That is why I am actually loving to use Brilliant, today's sponsor. As you know, I value transparency on this channel and by trying Brilliant for about two weeks now, I can definitely say Maria seal of approval. I love when I can find a place where I can practice and learn all kinds of topics from computer science subjects, engineering, machine learning, the list goes on. I believe that what sets Brilliant apart from other platforms is its unique approach to learning. Rather than just simply presenting information and having you just staring at the screen passively, Brilliant will engage you with dynamic and interactive content. The courses are crafted to challenge learners of all levels from beginners to experts so don't worry as you're taking the courses brilliant encourages you to think critically solving complex problems and developing practical skills and guess what it's exactly what you need in order to be a good developer and the best part is as a special treat for the first 200 of you who subscribe to brilliant's annual plan they will offer an exclusive 20% discount. But wait, there's more. For all of you who sign up using this link, you will get a fabulous 30-day free trial, so no commitment, you can cancel anytime you want. And during this period, you can explore everything that Brilliant has to offer. No commitment, and hey, it's free. You're not gonna lose anything by giving it a try. So sign up, then come back here and tell me in the comments what you thought of the platform. Thank you, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video. I would not be afraid of copying. Everything's a copy of a copy of a copy. Antoine Lavoisier once said, Rien ne se perd, rien ne se crée, tout se transforme. Which translates to nothing's lost, nothing's created, everything's transformed. So if you're struggling to find a project, stop reinventing the wheel. Take what already exists and implement it with your vision, with your way. And I am not talking about plagiarism, which is trying to pass someone else's work off as your own. Austin Cleon once said in his book, Still Like an Artist, we learn to write by copying down the alphabet. Musicians learn to play by practicing scales. And painters learn to paint by recreating masterpieces. And that's true. The whole development of knowledge process and the whole learning process is very based off what already exists and taking that and imitating it. If you have a younger brother or sister, you may already have noticed how they tend to imitate you and want to be like you. We tend to reproduce things that we love or that we are interested about and so, you know, Take that and try to reproduce projects that you love. Do you like Spotify's design and you are learning React Native, for example? Why not try to build a clone, a Spotify clone, and you know give your final touches to it? There are hundreds of tutorials online about how to build full stack applications, clone of Netflix, clone of Spotify, and you could add your final touch to it, adding, for example, a functionality that you would like to see on Spotify. I don't know, just giving out random ideas here. The idea here is to try to replicate applications that you like, you know, products that you love in case you're out of ideas for projects. I believe I was very focused on creating the perfect project and having the best idea, but hey, you are now developing a startup. And even if you were, I don't think that would be the best approach. Number four, I will learn how to debug better. Learning how to effectively debug is a and central skill for any developer. Debugging is about identifying bugs 
that are maybe slowing down or ruining your application whole process. So it's about identifying and fixing problems to make sure your software runs smoothly. So how do I learn how to debug effectively? Some error messages are more common in certain technologies. The most common error messages of that technology that you are working on, that you are starting to learn, will save you a lot of time. Also, learning how to Google is a powerful tool. And I'm not kidding, several developers don't know how to do a simple Google search. And that is actually a skill that is very valuable. Using the right keywords, having attention to the problem, you will be constantly Googling as a software developer or a software engineer, or if you're working in tech, whatever. I would also pay more attention to the error messages itself instead of just, you know, freaking out. Okay, this is not working. What am I going to do? At first, I was actually afraid of error messages because I didn't know what they meant. I mean, what do you mean error on line 52 if I only have 30 lines? of code. So when your code produces an error, carefully read and try to understand what it is trying to tell you. For example, use a debugger. Most programming languages and development environments come with a built-in debugger. Debuggers allow you to kind of see how the flow of your application is going. You can inspect variables, set breakpoints, and observe the, the program's flow, which is incredibly helpful for finding bugs. So especially when you start working, you will have to deal a lot with other people's code, you know, someone else's code. And it is an incredibly uh, hard skill to build. You know, there are soft skills and this is a hard skill that's an effectively incredible hard skill for you to develop as a programmer. At last, I would not focus so much on having the correct knowledge or having the right tools or having the correct equipment to start doing anything. If you find yourself saying a lot, when I have the correct knowledge for this technology, I will then build this app. I, when I have X, I will conquer Y. When I take this course, I will then pre be prepared to blah, 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 blah. Look, I get it. It's human behavior to always look for the best and you know never never settle down but programming coding whatever it is about problem solving and problem solving comes with a very specific behavior which is repetition you may have heard so many times that you need to practice you need to develop your skills we learn code by coding more. But how do you know if you are learning by yourself, especially, that you are doing it the right way? Well, that's kind of the fun of it. You don't. You can always find a mentor and people that will help you and look at your code. But to learn, you will also have to be constantly searching for new ways of doing the same thing. Don't know if I'm making myself understood here. However, at the beginning, when you start developing your projects, you won't have enough skills, you won't have enough knowledge of how to build things at its best. It's during the whole process of building the application that you will actually start to fully understand what you need to know, what technologies you need to use, how to better structure your applications and etc. So how to use X and Y technology, all of this will sum up to your knowledge. And like I said, don't wait until you have the perfect project, the perfect idea. Like I said back in the video, running out of ideas, just go after ideas that already exist and, you know, try to replicate it and try to do things that you love. If you are really learning scripting and web scraping, for example, my boyfriend recently did something that I found really cool. We share a house and we have bills, obviously, and we have a folder on Google Drive where we save, you know, the bills, the electric bill, gas bill, and etc. And it's always a painful process to always check our email and download the invoice and, you know, put it there on, on the folder. So he actually built a script in Python that automatically does that, you know, with the Gmail API and etc. And I found that very cool. I'm actually uh, building a script myself for other, for other tasks that I need. And I think that, you know, having that vision, what can you automate? What can you make easier during your day to day? What are some repetitive tasks that you do on a monthly basis, on a weekly basis, on a day basis, daily basis that you can automate it? Try to build something that you will 
actually use. Building useful tools, that's very cool. So if you've enjoyed this video, all of these advices, check out this one right here where I talk the best VS Code extensions and I give an amazing bonus final tip to support you during your programming journey. I see you in the next one. Myself wondering what did happen to the last ten? I ran away with my life, fast forward, never turn back again. It's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And 19 was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. Is this really?